Hi everyone, I am back and today's episode is all about repotting moth orchids or Phalaenopsis. So actually, I received this one Phalaenopsis orchid from a friend that was moving, so she wanted me to take care of her plants um, temporarily, so she gave me this and I, I told her I'll repot them and, and take care of them while, um, you know, as long as she needs to. But look at this one. Okay, this is how, <laughs> this is how it came to me, actually in this pot and like this. So actually, don't be alarmed because moth orchids are epiphytes, so they grow in trees, so they, they have exposed roots, right? This one, what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to repot this in a bark mix. Um, currently, it's in sphagnum moss, and I, I prefer bark mix. You could do either one. Um, it's just really a matter of preference, um, but I do prefer bark mix. So the first thing that I did was I put the orchid in this pot. Um, this is not a draining pot, so normally, you know, I'll have an orchid growing in a clear pot like this with drainage holes, and I'll put it inside of a decorative pot with no drainage holes. So the way I like to water is I'll just fill this container with water, this pot up with water, and let it soak for a while, for, you know, 15 to 30 minutes or so, and then um, that's how I water them. So actually, that's what, that's what I did now to loosen up the potting medium. So I let it soak for a good 30 minutes or so, and it's nice and um, moistened. And the first thing you want to do is actually remove all the old media because it's, you know, it probably broke down. A bark mix will break down over time. Sphagnum moss will tend to get very acidic over time. It'll, uh, it won't break down as fast as bark mix, but it still will break down. There's going to be fertilizer salts that build up, so there's a lot of bad stuff. So over time, you do want to change the potting medium. So don't be afraid to do this. This is really not, um, it's not as scary as you, as you think. These are actually very tough plants, contrary to popular belief. Trust me, I'm, I've, I've grown these for probably 30, close to 30 years now, maybe 30, 20, 25 maybe. But anyway, as you can see, that actually went pretty well, okay? And we're left with the root system. I forgot my scissors, I'll be right back. All right, back with my scissors. So anytime you cut an orchid or really any plant, you want to sterilize your scissors. So some people use alcohol for that. I like to use a flame. So you can take a, you know, a lighter of some sort and literally just put the blade in the flame for you know maybe 30 seconds or so and move it around. It'll sterilize your scissors. That's very important, you don't wanna be snipping all your plants everywhere and maybe one of them is diseased or has, um, you know, has some sort of disease and then you'll end up spreading um, that disease to your other plants. So be careful for that, okay? So let's see, now I'm gonna clean up the orchid. So look at those, you know, look at those, there's a bunch of roots. Some of them are alive, some of them are not. Um, there's a couple dead flower stalks here. I'm just gonna start cleaning it up. Snip off the dead flower stalk. Oops, oh, that was a hard one. What you'll see, it, you know, there's there's some roots here that are completely are completely dead. Um, healthy orchid roots should be plump. Like this one is this one is a is alive. <laughs> it's plump. It's firm, and they actually turn green when you water them. So you'll know that they're alive. That's one indication that you'll know they're alive. If you have Something like this, where see how that just pulls off and you're left with a string? That's the actual orchid root. Um, so that either, um, that probably end up rotting and it's, it's dead. So you can see they just pull right off. See that? Those are not alive, okay? So I'm going to take all those dead orchid roots, snip them off. This whole thing's dead. Snip, snip. Don't be afraid, guys, because these are already dead. So you're doing your plant, um, you're benefiting your plant. See, this one's all, see that whole thing pulled off. That one probably rotted, okay? But there are, this is a good sign because there are some roots that are alive, which is good. Here we go. So a couple more snips, and then we're gonna go ahead and proceed. Really, that's it. I'm happy it has some roots, and now it's gonna go into its forever home. Well, not quite forever home, but <laughs> there we go. So now we have our, 
our orchid that is almost all cleaned up. I left just the roots that are alive. Nice plump roots that are left, okay? All right, so now we can go ahead and pot it, pot her up. So like I said, I like to use a bark mix. So I'll include all the links and descriptions of the, of the products that I'm using right now in the description of this video. You'll need a few supplies. So I like to use these clear pots and I'll put a link in, in the description as well. The reason I like to use clear pots is because you can tell the, the health of the root system and also orchids are epiphytes, right? They grow up in tree, tree branches. Their roots actually photosynthesize. So if you expose the roots to light, that's actually a good thing for the plant. So that's another reason why I like these containers. You'll also need a decorative pot. I'm gonna actually put it back in here. And I like to use a bark mix. So um, there, there's a couple different kinds that, that, that I do like to use. It's just a very chunky, chunky bark mix meant specifically for orchids, okay? And what I did first, I put the bark mix in here and I soaked it in hot water for about half an hour. And the reason is because bark mix gets super, super, super dry. So what you'll need to do is hydrate the bark mix before you use it. Otherwise, it's gonna be very hard to, to hydrate it just from a watering. Um, so this, this will give it a good start. Another thing that I like to add to the bark mix is activated charcoal. Um, so you may or may not have heard of that or used it in, in orchid, um, orchid mixes or even potting soil. Um, activated charcoal, I just threw in a, a small handful. It's awesome because it helps to absorb any toxins. It helps to absorb impurities. It helps to absorb excess fertilizer salts in your potting mix and it'll keep your, it'll keep your mix um, in good condition for a little bit longer. So um, I like to throw that in as well. So now that we've cleaned up our orchid, right? We have our pot, we have our, our potting mix that I had soaking in, in water for about half, hot water for about half an hour. Then I drained it all out, okay? And th then I'm gonna put it in here at the end, okay? So I'm simply just going to start putting the bark mix Press it down so you don't want any air gaps. You don't want any air gaps in here. So press it down. You'll also want to test the level of, of your orchid. So I'm going to put this in here. And actually, actually this, this is pretty, pretty good here. Because what I want to do is see here at, at the base of the plant, right at the base of the plant here, you don't want to have it high. You want to have the, the bark mix level about at the base of the plant. Because what's gonna happen, if you have it too high, if you have it too high like this, the orchid is gonna start growing roots, right, at the base, and then they're gonna become aerial roots. And, but there's nothing wrong with that. There's nothing wrong with just having, just by the fact of having aerial roots. But if you have it a little bit lower, those roots will grow into the potting mix and they'll stay hydrated um, a little bit better. Because what happens is, if your orchid has a ton of crazy or, um, aerial roots, you're gonna have to mist them in order to keep them hydrated because if you don't do that, they're gonna shrivel up and die. So it's always, it's a good idea to have it, um, to have the very base of the, you don't wanna bury it, but just the base of the plant right about at the level of the, of the potting mix. So I'm just gonna keep filling this with the potting mix and you know, kind of using my finger to pack it down. You can even use a bamboo stake as well, like a thin bamboo stake if you'd like. This one doesn't have as many roots, so it's not really as tricky to, to pot up. So I'm just go going to use my finger. You don't want to pack it super tight, but you don't want any air gaps. You want to avoid air gaps so that your roots have good contact with, with your potting mix, okay? With your bark mix or whatever you happen to be using. Again, some people like sphagnum moss, some people prefer some other, uh, there's a lot of different things that, that you can use to pot up orchids with, um, including some artificial media, but I like to use bark mix personally, so, all right. So I'm gonna keep, keep doing that. I also have a blog post on, that I wrote on repotting orchids, so I'll, I'll include that link in the description of this YouTube um, video. And make sure to subscribe to my YouTube video and also my blog at ohiotropics.com as well. 
Um, so I regular, regularly write on my blog, um, mostly all houseplant care topics. Um, sometimes there'll be an occasional topic of outdoor uh, tropical plant gardening. I like to grow a lot of tropical plants outside in the summer. Make sure you visit ohiotropics.com and you can subscribe with your email for free. Don't miss out on that. All right, so I'm gonna keep packing here and I'm almost done. So you want to avoid, again, try to avoid the air gaps. I'm just about done here and I, I have so many orchids to repot. Also, I wanna mention that the best time to repot is actually after the plant's done blooming. I think I'm about done. And the last thing I'm gonna do is just give it a good soaking in the sink and, and I'm all done. Put it back here and it's gonna go back up by its window. So hope you guys enjoyed this episode. I also have a book that I wrote on moth orchid care called Moth Orchid Mastery. I'll put that link in the description as well. You can read it in, in under an hour. It has everything that you need to, to be able to grow orchids, uh, moth orchids successfully from light, watering, fertilizing, repotting, and a whole bunch of tips um, on, on orchid care. So I hope you guys enjoyed this and I'll talk to you guys soon. Thanks guys. And be sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel, like this video and comment. Thanks guys. I'll talk to you guys later.